Well, Tommy, um, I think we've got 15,000 on the weekend, which will be loud enough for fans are passionate about. Would you like to see it hopefully become more and maybe increase by the time we play Friday night? No, absolutely, I'd love to see 25,000 or a full house, but we've got certain parameters that we're working with, in, with at the moment. and. Um, you know, it's obviously a very serious issue that we're dealing with. So we know that those 15,000 will be loud and proud and making an absolute racket and it'll certainly feel like it's a full house. I was going to say, yeah, are you expecting a, still a very vocal crowd on Friday night? Yeah, in the past when we've played away games at the G and we've had travelling supporter groups, they've always um, certainly, you know, made more noise than what their number is. So um, we're probably the loudest supporters in the competition. We'd expect nothing different. And you, you, you feel for the ones that obviously missed out. Obviously, there's a few hard luck stories given you that track fifteen there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we got sixty thousand people that pay their membership each year, and only fifteen thousand of them were able to go to the game on the weekend. So, certainly very disappointing. And hopefully, we have a, uh, another opportunity at home this year for some different people to come along. So, um, we've been really appreciative of their support across the whole year and. Um, you know, we're going to try and honour that with a really strong performance and go all the way this year. I was going to say, there's a bit of talk that maybe you might not get that second final. It's a bit in the lap of the gods. You would be absolutely hoping that you do get that second home final. Yeah, we'd be really disappointed if we couldn't play another final at home. But at the same time, our mantra's been, you know, any time, anywhere, anyone um, for pretty much the last two years and it's held us in good stead. So we um, missed George How did you go with that? Yeah, he was out there and um, participated in a couple of drills. Um, did some extra work on the sidelines, so I suppose he's, you know, intentionally put his hand up. I wouldn't think we'd take a risk if there is any doubt this week, um, especially with Aratio out there and looking um, really good. So um, we've got some options. Obviously, if Mitch is fit, um, it'd be great to have him out there. So when will the decision be made? You think? I think match committees the Savo, so they'll be in there deliberating for the next couple of hours, and then um, Kenny will get around to most boys. There is. A Possibility that he wait till captain's run tomorrow to make the call. And Razo just had to get through? Well, Raz was certainly one that needed to get through, but at the same time, we also had blokes played really well in the Sample on the weekend. Boyd Woodcock had 40. Um, Sam Papper played good footy too. Tom, at one stage, halfway through the year, you look like a fair bit of trouble for troops. What sort of nick do you think you're in now, not only for numbers, but form wise? Yeah, um, it's certainly a long year and plenty can happen and we preached the squad mentality and it proved to be really important. Everyone was able to come in and play a role when required. And fortunately now we're in a great position where we've pretty much got everyone available. So there are going to be some unlucky pieces and people that don't get an opportunity this week, but you know who knows what will happen and who's going to get an opportunity next week. And in terms of um, how we're positioned, I think, um, having your, your best or you know your preferred 22 s to select from is a great problem to have this time of year. You better than this time last year, you think? Uh, very similar, but I think on um, the back of the experience we had during last year's final series, we you know we might feel like we're a bit better place. The moment no, when Tom Rockcliffe was here and retired, he made the point that you came up with a game plan to beat Geelong in the qualifying final and played it well. Is it the same game plan or is it a different thought for Geelong this time? Yeah, we played a bit of footy against each other in the last 18 months, so we know each other pretty well, and I don't think their game style has changed too much. Ours probably hasn't either, so it'll be very similar, but at the same time, we didn't employ that too well um, earlier in the year. So there are tweaks we'll have to make, but um, it's going to be typical finals footy, and um, we feel like we're well-equipped to play that footy. If you were in match committee this afternoon, how would you go picking the side? Uh, you know, I'd like to think that if everyone's fit and ready to go, it'd probably be unchanged given that um, we had a really strong win on Friday night but uh, fortunately for me I'm not in that position and I don't have to make those decisions. Maybe one day down the track I might be sitting there but not just yet so I'll just leave that to those boys. Can you tell us what you found while having a dig deep this year when it was difficult for numbers and you had to keep winning? Yeah I suppose um, look, it obviously showed great resilience but it also showed our ability to win the close games and that was probably uh, something we've been working on for a few years. There was a time when we were on the other end of those, it felt like, for a long, long while, and now we find it found a way to win them. So we feel like we're perfecting that, um, you know, that, that red time play. Uh, and at the same time, we're finding resilience to stay in games and not get blown off the park. So what do you do about giving yourself better starts, though? Yeah, look, I think if you look at the weekend, um, our start actually wasn't too bad. We probably just didn't convert, and that was the story of... Um, the whole first half and sometimes that's just footy so the, the, the focus has got to be on the process more so than the outcome and I think if you look at the statistics besides the scoreboard in the first half compared to the second half uh, they're actually very similar so 
I feel like we actually played a pretty strong start. Considering Geelong's record in finals, is this the toughest opponent you could have had this week? To be honest, I haven't really looked into you know the records for uh, each of the sides. Obviously, Melbourne haven't played as much finals footy as Geelong in the past, but we like to think that whoever we played against would have been quite formidable, and we're going to be at, have to be at our best regardless of who it is. Tom Stewart had a big impact last time he's out this time around. How big of a win is that for you guys, and how do you utilise that? Yeah, that's a significant out for them, but I think they play a, a really strong defensive system where they're all supporting and coming off to assist. So um, they'd have players that have played that role um, in the past and throughout this year when they haven't had their first choice defenders available. So I don't make, think it'll make a significant difference and it's still going to be um, really important that we use the ball well going forward to give our forwards a chance. Who gets the role in Tommy Hawkins? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a good question. I think Trent McKenzie um, is likely to get first go. He has in the past, but it's one of those roles where he can't be required to you know, do it all alone. We've got to be able to get off and help him out when we get the opportunity. One of the strengths last time in that final in Adelaide against Falklands is you made him go wide. Can you do that again? Yeah, he still had plenty of shots. Unfortunately for us, he missed a few and we were able to push him wide, like you said. Um, ideally, we just would stop the ball from getting down there a bit more so he has less shots because um, he is a quality finisher, whether it's um, directly in front or in the pocket. Uh, Tony, you talk about that, you're better for the experience from the finals campaign last year, but what's, what, what's sort of different and what would you do differently this year? Yeah, I think if you look at some of the boys that played last year, it was their first final or prelim, and just having um, got that under their belt and felt the energy and the excitement and the build-up, I think they'll be, be better for that. Um, and also, like I talk about, uh, just you know, those, those tight moments late in games or when it's on the line, I think we've continued to improve our game there. Um, Tommy, first of all, the situation with, with Russell, um, take us through the connection with these guys and what it means as a club. Yeah, so as, as you'll know, um, Russell's in the midst of a pretty tough fight. Um, he's an absolute champion at our footy club and his legacy goes well beyond what he did on the field. Um, so, you know, as part of Russell's fight, he's called out for any blood um, donations and that can still be done. You can still sign up as part of Team Russ um, to go and go and help um, by delivering some blood or some plasma. Um, and through the AFL Players Association, the Port Adelaide Playing Group, we thought um, it'd be a great opportunity to show our respect for Russell and our support for him um, by donating $5,000 to his cause and the great work that um, the Australian Red Cross do. Thank you. Layla, did you want to say some words as well? Oh, first of all, thank you so much to the Port Adelaide Football Club for your support. It's just been unprecedented. Team Russell was actually set up in February and um, they've already given over a thousand blood donations, which makes it the fastest growing lifeblood team in South Australia's history. So um, this donation will go towards helping other areas of lifeblood like Milk Bank, helping premature babies uh, receiving the milk that they need. Um, and so that really helps us and thank you so much. And we just want to remind people to come on in and roll up their sleeves like Port Adelaide Football Club has and the members and the community and they've just helped so much. Yeah, I think I think that's just a testament to the um, the pull that the Port Adelaide Footy Club and um, you know the Ebert family have to be able to have that sort of traction and create that sort of um, movement. It's incredible. So we're just it's a privilege to be able to help. Thank you. Hey, Tommy, just just one more, just on Russ. Yep. Steve last night. to be a uh, back the legend. Oh, I didn't actually catch that, mate. I think I was busy um, watching Survivor, but. <laughs> Maybe don't run that, but oh. <laughs> nah. But I was, yeah. Oh, look, his record speaks for itself, and I think we all know within this room that he's an absolute legend. So um, when the time's right, that'll happen. Have you done it in front of the camera? Or is that... No, not like this. Um, he'll done it on your social media before, but that was just good, Matt. So it was good.